This man is shameless. Not only did he force himself on the holy maiden of the demon sect, but he also stole her elixirs from her personal clothing. However, he didn't expect the woman to come back just after taking a bath and catch him red-handed, wearing a pink helmet on his head while tampering with her clothes. Now, it's completely impossible to explain. Looking at the furious holy maiden, Pei Ling felt bitter in her heart. Dog system, in my next life. I will definitely give you 10,000 negative reviews. In the next moment, a mushroom cloud rose from the Fuyun Academy, shocking Jinjin Chan, who was not far away. But luckily, the holy maiden didn't harm her future husband. The attack narrowly missed Pei Ling as it passed by him. Pei Ling couldn't understand why the holy maiden showed mercy to him. Little did he know that Li Lai Yu had just lifted the curse from him. At this moment, Jinjin Chan, who heard the commotion, and Pei Hongyan arrived here. Pei Hongyan, standing aside, was filled with astonishment. Pei Ling, what are you doing here? He asked. Upon hearing Pei Ling's name, Jin Jinxian's face immediately darkened. Then he went to complain to Li Lai Yu. Sister, this person is deceitful. Please punish him severely. But before he could finish his sentence, the woman slapped him away. Unable to get up from the ground, Li Lai Yu didn't offer any explanation. She took out a small ink jade boat from her bosom, formed a hand seal, and the boat stretched out in the wind. In an instant, it transformed into a three-story tall floating ship in midair. The woman stepped onto the ship and turned around to look at the others, saying lightly, return to the sect. Pei Ling felt secretly delighted that they were finally leaving. He had successfully survived this ordeal. However, after waiting for a while, the ship remained motionless. Pei Ling turned around and found Li Liyue's eyes fixed firmly on him. Pei Ling had a bad premonition and was about to slip away quietly when Jin Qinshan directly called him out, saying, what are you standing there for? Hurry up and get on board. Reluctantly, Pei Ling had no choice but to begrudgingly step onto the ship. Finally, the ship started and turned into a streak of light, flying towards the Zhongming sect. However, in this world, Pei Ling, experiencing flight for the first time, had no mood to appreciate the scenery around him. He sat crouched on the deck, focusing on appearing more inconspicuous. Inside the cabin, two fairies were quietly observing Pei Ling. They couldn't understand why their master would personally break the restriction of the Luo Sha Yan Gui painting for him. However, the climax was about to begin. It turned out that Jin Jinshan had brought Pei Hong in to cause trouble. Jin Jinshan's eyebrows flashed with a touch of killing intent as he sternly shouted. Who gave you the courage to steal my tempering bone pill? A ferocious light flickered in Jin Jinshan's eyes. He was about to make a move when he suddenly realized that the traces of the Luo Shiyan Gui painting on Pei Ling had disappeared. His thoughts shifted, and he suddenly realized, could it be that senior sister personally removed it? It seemed that senior sister valued this kid quite a bit. Thankfully, he had been clever enough not to act recklessly. Seeing that Jin Jinshan had no intention of making a move, Pei Ling quietly breathed a sigh of relief. However, Pei Hongyan on the side exclaimed, You're already at the fourth level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. Just a few days ago, you were only at the second level of the Foundation Establishment Realm. Jin Jinshan, upon hearing this exclamation, also realized the situation. The tempering bone pill can only be taken once. So could this kid have cultivated ten times in just one day? Perhaps that's why senior sister valued him. He then took out a large cleaver. Pei Ling was immediately terrified. Is he going to chop me? Pei Hongyan, seeing the cleaver, also exclaimed, It's the life-loathing blade. What does senior brother want to do? Unexpectedly, Jin Jinshan calmly said, Considering that you two contributed to capturing Wu Tingxi, you didn't get a share of the 50 tempering bone pills earlier. The sect has always been fair in rewards and punishments. I will give you both a chance. He slowly reversed the handle of the cleaver and held the blade with just two fingers, saying in a measured tone, I will only use 20% of my strength. Whoever can pull the blade from my fingertips will own it. Pei Hongyan was overjoyed and eagerly stepped forward without hesitation. He tightly gripped the handle of the cleaver, using all his strength but he couldn't even budge the blade. Instead, he was thrown to the ground by the blade's malevolent energy. A mocking smile appeared on Jin Jinshan's lips as he handed the blade to Pei Ling. It's your turn now. However, Pei Ling quickly waved her hands, thinking that Jin Jinshan couldn't possibly be so kind-hearted. With his weak strength, it would be better to decline. But Jin Jinshan's face darkened. It seems you look down on this life-loathing blade. Then, as the situation became increasingly critical, two women dressed in translucent palace attire, who had been secretly observing, floated out. They were senior sister's ghostly maidservants. Jin Jinshan's pupils contracted, instinctively revealing a hint of fear. He quickly and respectfully asked, Zhao and I and Wu Lu have come together. Does senior sister have any instructions? However, Wu Lu went straight to Pei Ling's side and lightly flicked his chin with her finger. Quite handsome, aren't you? But in the next moment, her expression changed, and she coldly said, hurry up and pull out the blade. If you disturb the master, I'll skin you alive. 
Pei Ling had no choice but to step forward and pull out the blade. Jin Jinchan, with a smug look on his face, thought, just a measly fourth level of the foundation establishment realm. How could you possibly pull out this blade? However, his expression drastically changed the next second because, as Pei Ling exerted force, the life-loathing blade between his two fingers was slowly pulled out. Seeing that Pei Ling was about to pull out the life-loathing blade, Jin Jinchan, who had agreed to only use the strength of the second level, secretly increased it to the fifth level. Facing Jin Jinchan's fifth level strength, Pei Ling predictably lost the battle. Looking at the exhausted Pei Ling, Jin Jinchan was about to show off, but he was interrupted by the ghostly maidservant. Master already has Pei Hongyan, a useless person, on the Xian Bone Linging boat. We can't have another one. The lampshade in the master's room is worn out, so let's skin you to make a new one. Pei Ling had a speechless expression and thought, holy shit, does your master know how wicked you are? Your master didn't even touch me, and I was planning to make a desperate fight. At that moment, Wu Lu suddenly spoke softly, sister, don't be like this. After all, young master Pei has been in remote areas before, and his vision and strength can't be compared to the disciples of the holy sect. In my opinion, it's better for Xin Jinchan to restrain himself a bit and test him with percent 15 of his cultivation. Jiao and I glanced at her and saw Wu Lu sweetly smiling at her. With a thought in mind, she said, according to you, Pei Ling quickly thanked Wu Lu and she swiftly floated in front of Pei Ling, showing a friendly smile. You have to work hard or else you'll only be able to be a lampshade for Jiao and I, right? Jin Jinchan looked at the two of them singing in harmony and thought, could this be senior sister's intention? It seems like I won't be able to hold on to this blade. He could only pretend to be indifferent and once again handed the blade to Pei Ling. As Pei Ling exerted force, the treasured blade was instantly pulled out. Jin Jinchan endured the tears of grievance, encouraging Pei Ling to use the treasured blade well in the future and not bring dishonor to its name. Pei Ling quickly expressed his gratitude and Wu Lu praised Pei Ling as well. Then, she led Pei Ling to the cabin to rest. Just as they entered the interior of the cabin, Pei Ling felt a chill and coldness, and there were occasional thumping sounds of doors banging around them. Truly befitting of a demonic sect, it was indeed eerie. Suddenly, a pair of crimson eyes emerged from a room behind them, accompanied by a wave of yin energy rushing towards Pei Ling. At a critical moment, it was Wu Lu who scolded lightly, causing the yin energy to slowly recede. Pei Ling expressed his thanks once again, but Wu Lu seemed casual and, in the midst of conversation, they arrived at Pei Ling's room. However, Wu Lu didn't show any intention of leaving, instead, she turned and asked, Child Pei, may I ask you a question? Pei Ling didn't dare to refuse and replied, Please go ahead, Mississippi. Just as the words fell, Wu Lu suddenly moved and appeared in front of Pei Ling, so close that she was practically touching the tip of his nose. Her pink eyes stared directly at Pei Ling, and her ice-cold fingertips gently caressed his neck, exhaling a frosty breath. Child Pei, why do you have the scent of my master on you? Pei Ling was greatly shocked, and cold sweat almost instantly surged out. He thought, could she know what I did to his master? Wu Lu slightly tilted her head her cold little hand intimately caressing his cheek, and softly said, My master's soul-subduing Bell's heart devil melody is difficult to resist, even for Jin Jin Zhan. Yet you can act as if nothing happened towards my master. I'm really curious, what extraordinary qualities does child Pei possess? Hearing this, Pei Ling was both shocked and embarrassed. It wasn't just that she knew, it was obvious she witnessed the whole thing, and the heart devil Bell and all that. It was the system that took care of it for me. Stammering, Pei Ling said, well, maybe it's because of my special constitution. Seeing Wu Lu's disbelief, Pei Ling quickly explained, when we captured Wu Tingxi earlier, he claimed to have an exceptional iron body. So, I suppose it's because of my special constitution. Wu Lu seemed to understand something after listening. He had an exceptionally stable soul and was skilled in refining his body. Such a powerful and unknown constitution was indeed worth bringing back to the holy sect for further study. By then, the master would extract your soul for a little experiment, who knows what interesting things might be discovered. Pei Ling instantly broke into a cold sweat. This is bad, so that's why they insisted on bringing me on this wretched ship. They actually see me as a guinea pig. And then, Wu Lu leaned close to Pei Ling's ear again and said, Child Pei, you must be careful. My master's methods of torture can make you unable to resist. After saying that, she swiftly performed a knife hand strike, knocking Pei Ling unconscious. In the moment before Pei Ling lost consciousness, he vaguely saw a sinister smile from Wu Lu and the graceful figure of Li Lai Yu approaching. The following scenes are probably not something everyone would like to see, so I'll skip them for you. The Xian Bone Lingying boat continued tirelessly towards the heavy mist sect. Inside the room, Pei Ling, for some unknown reason, was sweating profusely. Outside, two disciples were complaining about why the Xian Bone Lingying boat was moving so slowly. It had been half a month, 
and they still hadn't reached the holy sect. Little did they know that the owner of the boat was engaged in a century-long battle with Pei Ling. Meanwhile, there was no clock in the room, and without realizing it, half a month had passed. On Jin Jinchan's side, he intended to have Pei Hongyan take Pei Ling to the outer sect. Pei Hongyan couldn't understand, asking what qualifications that kid had to enter the outer sect. Jin Jinchan didn't explain and simply ordered Pei Hongyan to leave. It was Li Liyue's command, and he didn't dare to disobey. Half a month quickly passed, and one day, Pei Ling slowly woke up from the bed, realizing that his inner energy seemed to have increased a lot. However, his waist was a bit sore. At that moment, Pei Hongyan's shout came from the door. Pei Ling walked over slowly and opened the door, only to see his face pale and emaciated, as if he hadn't had a moment of rest in the past half a month. Pei Hongyan informed him that the flying ship was about to arrive at the Heavy Mist sect and told him to pack up quickly. Pei Ling was shocked and panicked. He quickly closed the door, realizing that he had entered this sinister sect and didn't know if he could survive by hiding. He had to find a way to escape. Just then, a purple mist suddenly appeared in the room, and Li Lai Yu once again appeared in front of Pei Ling. Before Pei Ling could react, a secret manual flew towards him, hitting him directly on the forehead. Li Lai Yu didn't waste any words and left only one sentence, master it within 10 days, or die. Then she disappeared. Pei Ling picked up the secret manual and saw the words Bloodthirsty Blade Technique written in Cloud Seal script on the cover. Just as she flipped open the pages, the system prompted a notification, detecting the inclusion of an unfamiliar external knife technique. Being collected, Pei Ling smirked with pride, thinking, I have cheats. What do I have to fear? This is the first time I find this dog of a system so pleasing. The scene shifted, and after half a month, the flying ship finally arrived at the Heavy Mist sect. Following Pei Hongyan, Pei Ling went up to the deck and couldn't help but exclaim, This is much more bustling than Luchuan City. Pei Hongyan introduced, This is the Dust Cutting Terrace. New disciples will enter the sect from here, bidding farewell to the mortal world and entering the realm of immortals. Then, he was going to take Pei Ling to complete the procedures for joining the outer sect. Pei Ling thought, I wonder what kind of formidable characters are in the outer sect. Maybe I should just be a menial disciple. Just as he was about to decline, Pei Hongyan grabbed his wrist and said, Don't waste time. This is Senior Zhang's order. Or do you want to defy Xin Jinshan's will? Pei Ling quickly responded, I dare not. Soon, the two arrived at the inheritance hall. Upon entering, they saw a shabby-looking old man lying sideways on a couch, holding a wine jar. The old man complained, can't even have a drink in peace. Suddenly, countless soul lamps floated in the entire hall. In that moment of Pei Ling's confusion, the old man pointed his two fingers at the male protagonist in midair. Pei Ling's body abruptly stiffened, unable to move, as a strand of essence blood slowly floated out from her forehead. With a swoosh, it merged into one of the soul lamps. The old man calmly said, with this soul lamp ignited, you are now a member of the Heavy Mist sect. Take the rules and leave quickly. The two didn't dare to delay, so they took the rules and ran off in a hurry. Looking at the thick rules in his hands, Pei Ling was overjoyed. He thought, I'm not afraid of having many rules, I'm only afraid of having no rules. As long as I abide by the rules, I can survive even in adversity. Pei Ling, lost in her fantasy, couldn't help but laugh foolishly. Pei Hongyan said, once you finish reading the rules, you'll understand. The biggest rule of the Heavy Mist sect is that there are no rules. The male protagonist, who had just arrived at the Heavy Mist sect, was trembling in fear at the sight of two fierce and evil-looking men. Fortunately, Pei Hongyan arrived just in time and casually threw a nameplate and a storage bag to Pei Ling looking at the nameplate made of a piece of bone. Pei Ling felt nauseated. It truly lived up to being a sect from the underworld. Pei Hongyan reminded him, this nameplate is the most important thing you have. It can save your life in critical moments. He then took out a small paper boat from his pocket, which quickly grew larger when thrown into the sea of clouds. He jumped onto the paper boat, intending to take Pei Ling to his residence. However, he wondered if the shaky paper boat was reliable. Fortunately, once the paper boat took off, it was quite stable. While Pei Ling was fantasizing about what the sea of clouds below looked like, a green feather floated in front of him, followed by the appearance of a gigantic green bird. Before Pei Ling could react, the bird swiped its claw and overturned the paper boat. Pei Ling was shocked and frightened, wondering how there could be demonic beasts in the holy sect. Just as he was about to draw his sword to vanquish the beast, Pei Hongyan stopped him, saying that using a knife would damage his paper boat. 
While the two hesitated, the paper boat collided with a nearby mountain, and both of them fell from the clouds. Fortunately, they were both cultivators and didn't suffer severe injuries. Pei Hongyan, who was hanging from a tree, was still lamenting over his paper boat. Suddenly, there was an exclamation from nearby. Senior sister son, I found it. Now let's see where you can run. Pei Ling watched as the two approaching figures were filled with aggression. He thought to herself that the strange bird must have been released by them. Just as he was about to step forward to confront them, he realized that Pei Hongyan had already gone ahead and transformed into a sycophant. He shamelessly flattered a woman in green clothing, licking her frantically. However, in the next second, the woman slapped him away. Pei Ling couldn't believe that Pei Hongyan wasn't even the slightest bit angry. Instead, he knelt before the woman, continuously apologizing. Pei Ling had an expression of speechlessness. He never expected Pei Hongyan to be such a bootlicker. The woman in green was about to continue reprimanding him. Pei Ling unable to bear watching any longer, stepped forward and grabbed the woman's wrist. The woman, who was at the fourth layer of the foundation establishment realm just like Pei Ling, found herself unable to break free. Immediately, her expression changed to one of grievance, and she said, Pei Hong Yin, is this how you watch your junior fellow disciple bullying me? Upon hearing these words, Pei Hong Yin immediately stood up. He admonished his junior fellow disciple and told him to release Yin Lan, addressing Pei Ling as junior fellow disciple. Pei Ling had no choice but to step aside, watching his senior fellow disciple once again act like a sycophant. Afterwards, Pei Hong Yin instructed Pei Ling to go to the administrative hall and find a place to stay on her own while he followed Sunny Nian. As Pei Ling watched Pei Hong Yin leave, he couldn't help but twitch his lips a couple of times. He was truly a devoted bootlicker. There was no hope for him. Pei Ling bid farewell to his bootlicker senior fellow disciple and arrived at the administrative hall alone, intending to choose his own residence. Facing the senior fellow disciple in charge of the property, Pei Ling had a face full of speechlessness. He never expected that after transmigrating, he would still have to pick a room. Before the senior fellow disciple could finish speaking, he interrupted with a beaming smile, saying, how about you lend me some spirit stones, senior fellow disciple? I promise. Pei Ling's words were cut off coldly by the senior fellow disciple, who said, then go over there. From now on, head west for 100 miles. Meanwhile, inside the Xian Boning spirit boat, Jin Jinshan was reporting Pei Ling's situation to Li Lai Yu. Unaware of the situation, Jin Jinshan wanted to find out why Pei Ling was being given such attention. Li Lai Yu calmly set down the teacup in her hand and turned to Jin Jinshan, saying, I heard that you want to go mining in the Yinglu mountain range. Seeing the unfavorable situation, Jin Jinshan immediately apologized and hastily left the room. After closing the door, Jin Jinshan secretly pondered, Sister values that kid so much and has me look after him in my name. Could she be testing him? Inside the room, after Jin Jinshan left, Li Lai Yu summoned a ghostly maid and instructed her, saying, Wu Lu, keep an eye on Pei Ling. After a long journey, Pei Ling finally found his residence. To him surprise, his living quarters were so luxurious that tears filled his eyes. He realized that he had misunderstood the senior fellow disciple in charge of the property. Stepping into the courtyard, Pei Ling noticed that three of the room doors were sealed with talismans, indicating that three senior fellow disciples had already moved in, though they seemed to be absent. With nothing else to do, Pei Ling took out the sex rules and the life-loathing blade, intending to study the sex rules carefully. It was the lifeline for him survival in the future. The Chong Ming sect was established tens of thousands of years ago and was one of the top major sects in the domain. Each peak in the various regions was managed by the local administrative hall, while the treasury hall sold cultivation techniques, and the treasure hall sold magical artifacts. In addition, there was also the enforcer hall responsible for monitoring and punishing disciples. After getting a general understanding, Pei Ling quickly examined the door rules to prepare herself in advance. However, what Pei Ling didn't expect was that the summary of the entire door rules was simply, compensate with money. If disciples fought privately, they would be fined spirit stones. Initiating an attack would result in a spirit stone penalty, and causing disability would also be settled with spirit stones. Even killing for treasure could be resolved with spirit stones. In short, the bottom line was that as long as you had money, you could do whatever you wanted in the Chong Ming sect. I thought that as long as I familiarized myself with the door rules and followed them, relying on my own survival skills, I would be able to achieve something. Little did I know that the unexpected would come so quickly. Suddenly, there was a commotion outside the house, and the next moment, the front door was kicked open, and three unfamiliar men entered. One of them frowned slightly and asked, Who are you? Pei Ling quickly and obediently introduced herself, saying, Senior brothers, 
My name is Pei Ling. I am a newly admitted outer disciple at the Foundation Establishment Realm, 4th level. Looking at this sudden junior fellow disciple, the three men exchanged glances and communicated silently. Now is not the time for new disciples to enter. This person has a special identity. Let's not act rashly. Afterwards, one of them introduced himself, saying, I'm Li Si at the Foundation Establishment Realm, 4th level. These two are Zhou Yi and Miao Qin, at the Foundation Establishment Realm, 4th and 5th levels, respectively. Meeting each other is fate. We'll take care of you from now on, junior fellow disciple. Pei Ling quickly expressed his gratitude and thought to himself, I didn't expect there to be such good people in this gloomy sect. Then the three inquired about how Pei Ling entered the outer section. Seeing their relatively calm attitude, Pei Ling felt a bit relieved and explained that it was arranged by the inner sex vein master, senior brother Jin Jin Zhan. However, Miao Chen blurted out, that waste, Jin Jin Zhan, only managed to secure the position of inner sex vein master because of his distant relation to Li Lai Yu. Pei Ling was speechless, he hadn't expected Jin Jin Zhan's reputation to be so poor. Li Si continued, Junior fellow, don't take offense. Miao Chen has some conflicts with Jin Jin Zhan. Li Si continued to inquire about the relationship between Pei Ling and Li Lai Yu. Pei Ling dared not borrow Li Lai Yu's name and quickly explained, Senior brother, you've misunderstood. I was just fortunate to receive Jin Jin Zhan's promotion. It has nothing to do with Li Lai Yu. Li Si's expression became somewhat subtle upon hearing this and suddenly pointed at the life loathing blade, saying, Junior fellow, does this knife look familiar? Pei Ling quickly replied, Senior brother, you're mistaken. It's just an ordinary knife. However, Li Si insisted, it's indeed the life-loathing blade. Jin Jin Chan relied on this knife to defeat countless opponents in the outer sect. Zhou Yi directly said, Pei Junior fellow, name your price. I want this knife. Pei Ling smiled apologetically and said, I'm sorry, Senior brother Zhou. This knife was given to me by Senior brother Zhen. It wouldn't be appropriate to sell it. Unexpectedly, the three of them didn't pay any attention to Jin Jin Chan at all and didn't think highly of Pei Ling. Seeing Pei Ling's ignorance, Zhou Yi immediately threw a punch at him. Pei Ling was sent flying to the wall by the tremendous force of the punch, causing a cloud of dust to rise. When the dust settled, Pei Ling was unharmed. Realizing that today's situation couldn't be resolved peacefully, Pei Ling no longer hesitated. He held the knife handle with both hands and stood in front of him calmly saying, if you want the knife, let's see if you're capable. Suddenly, Miao Chen formed hand seals and wielded his long sword, while two sword light directly aimed at Pei Ling. Pei Ling couldn't dodge in time and could only resist with the life-loathing blade. Although he easily destroyed the sword energy, the blade of the knife shook violently under the impact. Before Pei Ling could react, Zhou Yi's fist came crashing in. Pei Ling swiftly dodged, realizing that they were attacking without holding back. Enraged, Pei Ling fiercely wielded the life-loathing blade in front of him. Just then, Li Si, who had been silently observing, suddenly spoke up. He doesn't know swordsmanship. Knock his life-loathing blade away. He quickly recited an incantation, and two translucent ghosts appeared beside him, swiftly charging towards Pei Ling. Pei Ling, who was new to the martial world, hurriedly used his knife to defend himself. However, to him surprise, the two ghosts passed through his body directly. Pei Ling felt as if his head had been struck hard by a hammer, causing dizziness, blurred vision, and weakness in her limbs. However, he gathered his spirits and forcefully swung the life-loathing blade to repel the ghosts. Li Si was amazed to see how quickly Pei Ling recovered, wondering how stable his spiritual soul was. Just as Pei Ling was entangled with the ghosts, Zhou Yi took advantage of the situation and rushed forward, delivering a heavy blow to Pei Ling's chest. Pei Ling coughed up a mouthful of blood, and the large knife slipped from his hand. Enraged, Pei Ling endured the pain and exerted all her strength, punching Zhou Yi in the face. With her left hand, he grabbed his collar and threw him onto Li Si, who had come forward to assist. Seeing his two comrades fallen, Miao Chen was furious and warned, Kid, don't get cocky. I'm at the Foundation Establishment Realm, 5th level. As he spoke, two streams of sword light came at Pei Ling. This time, without the protection of the life-loathing blade, Pei Ling instantly spurted two streams of blood from his body upon the impact of the attack. Seeing that the attack was effective, Miao Chen, overjoyed, moved to pick up the life-loathing blade. However, just as his hand was about to grasp the knife, Pei Ling's foot had already stepped on his arm. You think you can touch my knife? Pei Ling sneered. Then, with a knee strike, he sent Miao Chen flying. The three individuals, witnessing how formidable Pei Ling was, simultaneously launched an attack against him. Pei Ling picked up the precious knife and forcefully struck, forcing the three of them back. However, he was already at his limit. Seeing that Pei Ling had resisted his two sword light attacks and still had fighting strength, Miao Chen considered retreat. Taking a deep breath, he angrily shouted, Pei Ling, we won't let you off today. 
Pei Ling replied coldly, then I'll kill all three of you. His voice was not loud, but carried a chilling intent. The three individuals were terrified by Pei Ling's astonishing momentum, their livers and gallbladders nearly shattering. Could it be that they would meet their demise today? However, in the next second, Pei Ling suddenly changed direction and rushed towards the nearby gate with even greater speed, disappearing outside the door in an instant. After about half an hour, panting heavily, Pei Ling stopped in a dense forest. He felt a lingering fear in his heart, realizing that he had almost forgotten the rules of this underworld sect. Killing a fellow member would incur a fine of 10,000 spirit stones. Reflecting on the battle just now, he nearly made a grave mistake due to his lack of swordsmanship. Now, he urgently needed to learn the bloodthirsty demon blade technique given to him by Li Laiyu. He then summoned the system and clicked on the bloodthirsty demon blade technique, selecting the option to cultivate it. However, the system popped up a notification, detecting that the host had injuries and continuing to cultivate the technique would cause irreversible damage. The host needed to first take a vitality restoration pill to recover from the injuries. When the system detected the vitality restoration pill, Pei Ling became anxious. This darn system, is it going to make me steal the big shot's elixirs? In the next second, Pei Ling, under the control of the system, reached into his own bosom. Fortunately, it was just a false alarm. It turned out to be the vitality restoration pill given to him by Li Laiyu. After taking the pill, Pei Ling immediately felt a warm flow rising from his dantian. As the system guided his cultivation, this warmth quickly spread throughout his limbs and body. Just as Pei Ling was immersed in the pleasant sensation of cultivation, the system issued another reminder. It detected that the host lacked the essence blood of Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators. The system would provide three Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators free of charge. Pei Ling's eyes widened in surprise. Three Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators? Could it be? Terrified, Pei Ling wanted to cancel the delegation, but the system completely ignored him. The direction it led him towards was exactly where the three individuals had been earlier. The scene switches and the three individuals are in the middle of a concluding meeting. If I were to use the sword talisman my elder brother gave me, Pei Ling would undoubtedly be doomed. This lowly born scum must have some secret to be so formidable. Tomorrow, we will send people to search the entire Huaying Peak and expose his secret. Just then, Pei Ling breaks through the door and enters directly. The three individuals are shocked by the sight. Pei Ling, I didn't expect you to dare to come back, says Li Si. But before he can finish speaking, Pei Ling slashes his throat with a single stroke of his blade. Ignoring the other two, he stabs the life-loathing blade directly into Li Si's body and begins cultivating with his essence blood. How can Zhou Yi and Miao Chen endure such humiliation? Zhou Yi leaps into the air and throws a punch towards Pei Ling. Without hesitation, the system issues a prompt, external attack detected. This cultivation session ends here. Please give a 5-star rating if satisfied. Pei Ling, with control over his body, quickly dodges the attack. But now, there is no turning back for either side. Pei Ling's eyes are filled with killing intent as he thrusts his blade forward, and Zhou Yi, whose muscles have gone limp, collapses. Furious, Miao Chen unleashes three consecutive sword energies. Knowing the power of this move, Pei Ling doesn't dare to underestimate it and immediately activates the bloodthirsty demon blade technique, dispersing the sword energies with a single stroke. Seeing this situation, Miao Chen no longer holds back and uses both hands to form seals, exerting all his strength to unleash the power of the sword talisman in his hand. Sensing the immense aura of the talisman, Pei Ling's heart trembles. He forcefully hurls the life-loathing blade, aiming directly at Miao Chen. However, Miao Chen remains calm and a trace of mockery appears on her lips. You're too slow. A surge of spiritual energy gathers in his right arm and rushes towards Pei Ling. In an instant, Pei Ling is in imminent danger. With a loud bang, a cloud of dust rises, and the entire courtyard is shattered by this powerful strike. When the smoke clears, Pei Ling's figure is nowhere to be seen. Miao Chen wipes the blood from the corner of her mouth and says, My elder brother's talisman is truly powerful. That scum must have been obliterated by the attack. Little did he know, at this moment, a voice behind his sends shivers down his spine. Have you underestimated me? The man is instantly terrified and collapses on the ground, pleading, Please don't kill me. My elder brother is an inner disciple. However, Pei Ling shows no hesitation. He decisively delivers a fatal blow with his blade, ending his life. Looking at the scene of devastation before him, Pei Ling sighs and says, Finally, it's over. As he looks at the system prompt popping up again, asking for a good rating, Pei Ling becomes furious. You have the audacity to ask for a good rating? According to the sect rules, killing an outer disciple incurs a penalty of 10,000 to 30,000 spirit stones. These three influential individuals are not ordinary, so I might be fined up to 90,000. However, they surely have valuable items on them, and maybe the fines can be easily covered. 
Paling turns their bodies upside down and, apart from a few bottles and jars on the table, the most valuable items are three storage pouches with different designs. Unfortunately, they are sealed and cannot be opened due to restrictions. The only things he can take are some worthless pills. Since the people are already dead, he decides to continue cultivating using their essence blood. One-click cultivation, the intelligent timer appears but then the system detects that he lacks the essence blood of Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators. The system will grant him two free Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators. Pei Ling wonders where these two cultivators came from, and suddenly, the life-loathing blade in his hand trembles, followed by two cries of agony nearby. It turns out that the hate-born blade is absorbing the essence blood of Zhou Yi and Miao Chen. Pei Ling can't help but marvel, they were pretending to be dead. The people of the Heavy Mist sect are indeed cunning. The gift of Foundation Establishment Realm Cultivators is complete. The system will continue cultivating for you. Pei Ling, controlled by the system, starts cultivating right at the crime scene. With a casual swing of his blade, the courtyard instantly becomes a mess. With a few leaps, he arrives outside the courtyard, and the wind howls with each strike of his blade. Pei Ling is overjoyed in his heart. The blood slaughter blade technique is indeed powerful. Wu Lu, the ghostly maid who has been watching from the sidelines, is also shocked. She didn't expect this kid to progress so quickly. No wonder he has such a captivating presence. As the system prompt sounds, the blood slaughter blade technique can be considered a great success. It's the first time Pei Ling feels satisfied with the system. Alright, let's reluctantly give it a 3 star rating, he decides. However, as Pei Ling regains his senses, he looks at the 90,000 spirit stones in front of him and hesitates. It's better to grab his things and run. However, before he can get far, Pei Ling stops in his tracks as he gazes at the vast mountains before him. He not only falls into contemplation but also realizes that he doesn't know which way to go. He can't find a way out. Tears in his eyes, he buries his three roommates, hoping to delay the investigators from the disciplinary hall. He has no choice but to seek help from his fellow disciple, Pei Hongyin, who is known for his servile behavior. However, as soon as he pushes open the courtyard door, he witnesses a scene that makes him cringe. Pei Hongyin is passionately kissing a portrait of Sunny Nan. Pei Ling is speechless. Wow, I guess I came at the wrong time, but his own life is more important. He pretends not to have seen the scene and warmly greets Pei Hongyin. However, to his surprise, Pei Hongyin looks terrified and asks him to keep his distance. Sunny Nan would be unhappy if she saw us together. Pei Ling quickly tries to smooth things over, saying, it's my fault for making our sister-in-law angry. Hearing the term sister-in-law, Pei Hongyin's face immediately reddens. It strikes a chord with him. Why don't you tell me how to leave the sect? I'll go find some gifts to apologize to our sister-in-law. As soon as these words are spoken, Pei Hongyin is moved to tears, patting Pei Ling on the shoulder while introducing him to the journey. From Huayin Peak to outside the sect, it's not too far. You can't leave on foot in this lifetime. If you want to leave the sect, go Ren Ying Corpse Cloud with 10 Spirit Stones. Pei Ling doesn't have spirit stones, so he tries his luck and asks if Pei Hongyin can lend him 10. Pei Hongyin instantly changes his expression. I've already given all my spirit stones to Sunny Nian. I don't have any extra to lend you, but you can go to the miscellaneous tasks department and earn spirit stones by taking on missions, and don't come looking for me in the future. Pei Ling doesn't want to say a word to this bootlicker and turns around, heading straight to the miscellaneous tasks department. He plans to see what tasks are available first, following the example of others. He inserts his nameplate into the slot and looks at the wide array of tasks in front of him. Pei Ling scratches his head as he sees these bizarre tasks. Deliver a letter for one month, rewarded with three low-grade spirit stones. Take care of a spiritual beast for one month, rewarded with spiritual beast feces. Find Ghostface Grass, rewarded with five low-grade spirit stones. Looking at these tasks, Pei Ling is at a loss. With these tasks, he won't be able to gather 90,000 spirit stones in this lifetime, let alone the next. Finally, he spots a task that rewards 800 spirit stones, but it requires a cultivation level of Foundation Establishment Realm 6 or higher. He realizes he won't reach that level in a short time. However, a thought crosses his mind. He doesn't really want these rewards. He can join a team first and sneak away during the mission, thereby leaving this infernal sect. But reality proves that joining a team is not as easy as he thought. The first team requires a cultivation level of Foundation Establishment Realm 6 or higher. The second team looks down on his lower cultivation level. The third team outright states that joining them with his level of cultivation is suicidal. Just when Pei Ling feels hopeless, a delicate hand rests on his shoulder. Junior Marshal brother, your cultivation level is quite low, but Senior Marshal sister won't look down on you. Pei Ling is frightened and runs away. Senior sister, you must look beautiful when you're slim. 
please spare me for now. Meanwhile, in a corner of the miscellaneous tasks department, another bootlicker of Sunny Man is reporting. Senior sister, am I right? That kid is looking for a team. Does he really think he can take on sect missions with his foundation establishment realm fourth level cultivation? Upon hearing this, Sunny Nan smiles and says, If Pei Ling dares to provoke me, I'll give him a helping hand today. 